no more. Everything I have ever done has been for my people. I am Romulan. And I will be avenged. Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Star Trek Online and the fourth in the Iconian War arc, Time in a Bottle. The last mission that we did was, well, pretty much every mission we've done against the Iconians has been a little bit of a failure so far, so let's see if we can turn things around today. We have a lead on the Krennim. Voyager went to Krenim space, looking for them a few months ago, but didn't find much more than a Vardwar and some anomalous sensor readings. But now, we found a Ferengi, selling what he claims are Krenim artifacts. You are authorized to negotiate with the Ferengi and obtain these artifacts. Follow the trail where it leads. We need a weapon against the Icodians. And the Vardwar have gone to a great deal of trouble to keep whatever secrets the Krenim have out of our hands. Well, there's a definite feeling of misgiving at the moment because, obviously, the Krenim, for those of you who followed Voyager, were responsible for a lot of heartache in that series, although I guess in theory that heartache never happened. I'm just looking over some of the rewards and the temporal flux generators definitely got my uh, definitely got my attention because it makes you invulnerable Ugh, heading to Rosanna huh well I suppose if we were going to meet a uh, less than savory Ferengi I suppose Rosanna is where we would probably meet him going in alone And just ignore the little skip there, it had nothing to do with me completely getting lost on Drazana Station. Let's speak to the station person here. Could buy a moon for that much latinum, huh? That could be bad. May I help you? Oh. Wait, you must be. I'm sorry, but... The business facilitator is busy at the moment and cannot be disturbed. Oh, I'm sure he'll be disturbed for us. Yes, but Quen left me explicit instructions about this. He's in the middle of a delicate negotiation to triple his profits on the sale of a rare Delta Quadrant artifact and cannot be disturbed. I see. Well, we'll take the Federation Maybe, way. Let's see. It was something... Krenim, I think. Oh, Delta Quadrant treasures are all the rage right now. Artifacts from cultures the Vadwar wiped out are particularly valuable. Quen's made quite a bit of latinum bringing them back through the gateways. Now, that profit-sharing plan he promised me hasn't materialized, but is it my place to complain? Well, maybe. Let's see. We've got a thread. I'm sorry. But my instruction... Well, I'm sorry, but I need this job. I'm trying to save up enough for a ticket off this station. Why is it always getting off the station? You, you can. What am I saying? You have a starship, of course you can. Go on ahead. Quen and the other buyer are in the cargo bay, but you better hurry. They were trying to get the deal finalized before you could stop them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sounds like Johnny Theron from DS9 Harbinger, for those of you who've seen my LP. But things might have turned out a little bit better for her. Plus, you know, Orion Hottie always kind of does well in the galaxy. Well, aside from the Slave Girl variety, but hey, never mind. Legitimate business, huh? Not so fast. The gentleman with the rather imposing associates over there has just made a very competitive offer for the device. Care to make a counter bid? You said there weren't any other buyers, Quinn. Now what do I see? 
Starfleet stooges here to cause trouble. Guards, get these riffraff out of here so I can conclude my deal in peace. Ooh, let's see how that works out for you. Yeah, about as well as can be expected. Now, what was that you were saying? Oh wait, is there still someone here? Ah. Okay, they're dead too. So, what were you saying about get rid of these riffraff? Fine! I'll add what I was going to pay those guards to my off. Hold it! I am not son of Grand Nagus Rom. And I am a Ferengi. And when you deal with these people, you deal with me. Uh, you have a choice. Either deal with me, or I ask my father to have a word with the liquidators about your poor business practice. Um, well, I'm sure we could come to an understanding. That's what I thought. Now, kiss the staff. Get out. Not you. That staff must have some germs on it. Anyway, let's talk to this guy. So Ron being more sorry, Nog being more awesome there than he was in the series. Offer. How about we agree on a price? And you get your Delta Quadrant doodad, and I leave. Everyone's happy. No? Fine. How about I answer your questions and maybe then I get to leave? But let's get on with it. Every minute I stand here, I'm losing a strip of platinum. Time is a very valuable commodity. Ooh, I know that. The device is Krenum in origin. Specifically, it's from the Krenum Imperium. Constructed sometime in the mid-22nd century, if I had to take a guess. Strange piece of technology. I haven't seen anything else like it. Highly advanced. And it has hallmarks of Krenum work. But it's, uh, odd. Definitely odd. How do you know about the Krenum? The Bodlar, that's what. At one point, the Krenum Imperium held more than 200 star systems in the Delta Quadrant. They lost some of that territory in a couple of wars, but overall they were doing well. Not the biggest business in the Quadrant, but not the smallest either. When the Vardlar started their war, Gaul took a special interest in the Krenum, bombed them back to the Stone Age, and then some. As far as anyone knows, the Krenum are basically extinct these days. I picked it up from a Talaxian who wanted to trade for supplies. He told me he got it from the uh, Kayana system. That was it. There used to be a Krenum colony there, but it's gone now, just like the rest of their empire. Why am I getting a deep sense of foreboding about this? The Kiana system was the system that Anorax was constantly trying to get wasn't back. very clear on that. He just said, gone. If I'd asked any more questions, he might have increased his price. As a show of good faith to the son of the Nagus, I'm willing to tell you for free. But don't let this get around. It would ruin my reputation as a businessman. The device emits some unusual energy readings. The shielding may have malfunctioned, or maybe it's not fully operational anymore. I'm not sure. But that's why I'm selling it as an antique. As is, and no refunds. Of course. Do I look like a member of the Vulcan Science Academy to you? I don't know. It's yours now. You paid for it. You figure it out. I hope it doesn't blow up your ship. <laughs> Now, may I go so we can put all this unpleasantness behind us? I want to drown my sorrows in a comet cocktail and think about all the profit I didn't earn today. Oh, we kind of ruined his day, didn't we? Don't let the staff of Avis and these good looks fool you. <laughs> I'm here as a Starfleet officer, and I don't normally flaunt my family connections. But in this case, it seemed like the best way to solve the problem. So I borrowed my dad's second best staff. 
Interesting. I know Voyager encountered the Krenim during the journey, and Tuvok was looking for survivors of the Vaudoir purges. For now, though, perhaps we should concentrate on learning what we can from this device. Quinn left without taking down his security, but fortunately I know how to get around it. This isn't a very sophisticated system. It's hardly worth a lap if you pay for it. <laughs> if we overload the EPS conduits, we'll create a cascade failure in the system that the control protocols won't be able to handle. That should drop the force field. Just run a big old current through it? I don't mind telling you a bit about myself at all. I grew up on Deep Space Nine with my father and my uncle Quark. That was back before my dad became a Negus. He was just a maintenance tech. Like my father, I preferred engineering to business. And Captain Sisko helped me get into the Academy, the first Ferengi ever to join Starfleet. I fought in the Dominion War, which is an experience I never want to repeat. And I spent some time on exploration ships. Then it was back to DS9 for a while, off to Utopia Planitia to work with the SCE, and finally taking command of the Chimera. Now I get to see the technology I helped develop at work in the field. Interesting. I know Voyager encountered the Krenim during the journey, and Tuvok was looking. Quinn left without taking down his security, but fortunately, I think you can overload the EPS conduits in the corner there. So, a few interesting things to come from that. They did say that Voyager encountered the Krenum, but I believe that when Year of Hell was reset... Now that the power flow is disrupted, we can override the administrative access requirements. All that Voyager should remember was that they encountered the Krenum and their territory was in dispute with the Zal, and that's just about it. Excellent. Now we can get a good look at this. Let's have a peek then. Waveforms aren't like anything I've seen before. I think I'm getting something. This is definitely Krenum in origin. And Quinn was right on the age. I'm also seeing some repeating elements in the base code, uh, almost like a signature. And that strange energy Quinn was talking about is actually chronotons. A lot of chronotons. And chronotons mean temporal manipulation. This little box just got a lot more interesting. Uh, Krenum, the temporal meddlers of the universe. I'll take the device back to my ship, the Chimera, and have a look while we're on the way to the Kiana system. From what I understand, Voyager sent an away team to the Kiana system a few weeks ago, but they encountered some resistance and were forced to pull back before they can find what they were looking for. But now that we have this, maybe we'll be able to find what remains of the Krenum, if there's anything left to find. Might not be much. Well, let's head to the Delta Quadrant. It's a lot more easy than it was in Voyager's time. I've Here we are. Many places as a Starfleet officer, but this is my first time seeing the Delta Quadrant. According to Quinn, the Krenum artifact came from this system. I hope we haven't come all this way just to chase ghosts. I've had a chance to look at the Krenum device, although I'm not sure how to activate it yet. It's definitely designed for temporal manipulation, although I don't think it would enable someone to travel through time. It's almost like a step sideways, if that makes any sense at all. I'll keep working on it and let you know if I learn anything more. Temporal phasing, maybe? Voyager's preliminary scans of the system turned up a number of anomalies, but nothing conclusive. According to Krenum records, though, there's supposed to be an M-class planet in this system. We're not reading anything like that on the sensors. Well, there's a lot of mess out here. Let's check that wreckage out first. It might give us a better idea of what happened out here. And we should be on the lookout for Vaudoir. Preliminary scans indicate they've been actively patrolling through this system. Oh, goody. Keep an eye out for Vaudoir. They're still patrolling this area. Well, let's get my fighters out there, just uh, in case things are going wrong. And let's just check I've got everything sorted the way I want it. And I do not... Uh, Just resorting out my bridge officer slots. There we go. Better. Decided I wanted three SROs and a few more copies of Tactical Team instead. Yeah, that's a real mess over there. If so I had what's a place that? Bet, I'd say that wreckage is where this artifact was found. 
Heads up! Bodwar on an intercept course. Oh, great. Uh oh. Unfortunately, not that worrisome. The wreckage appears to be Krenna. The weapon signatures are definitely Bodwar. So curious, I'm curious. The Krenna were a fairly small society. There had to be a reason the Vodwar went out of their way to target them. Let's move. There might be more ships in range. Indeed, at the end of Year of Hell, the Krenim didn't hold that many planets, but they used to be a very dominant society in the Delta Quadrant, and their technology was mainly based around temporal mechanics, so... with the uh, ever-ubiquitous Chronoton torpedo that was used in Year of Hell. There are more Vodwar on an intercept course, but we may be able to avoid them. I suggest we use the mineral content of the asteroid I've marked to conceal our energy signatures. Vodwar sensors aren't as good as ours. Most of their technological advantage appears to be directed toward making better weapons. So it should work, as long as we don't attract their attention before we get out of their path. Seems fine to me. Just playing around with my tray a little bit here. There are more Vodwar on it. Oh, we got that. So let's head in. And we've got 30 seconds to reach this, which at full impulse is going to be pretty easy. So yeah, the Krenim were not a big power in the Delta Quadrant at Voyager's time, but obviously with their ability to use temporal science, they can do a lot. Errol! They must be looking for that Vardwar patrol. Yeah. I don't De think those heralds detected us. Let's hope they don't come back this way. They are not Vardwar. They're a heck of a lot more worrying. Although, to be fair, in space, I would actually say that the Vardwar are just as much of a pain because of their uh, proton barrage that they do. I think it's proton. It might be Polaron barrage, but they're just big, big old barrage attack that they do. Herald's inbound. The we pissed them off by scanning. Never mind. So much for our investigation. Just one cruiser shouldn't be too bad. Nog takes points, and I guess we will uh, take care of the rest of this. from past missions that the Iconians are... This doesn't make sense. There's nothing here that would cause the readings I was seeing from orbit, but there are traces of chronotron particles. I've never known chronotrons to appear naturally without some sort of temporal manipulation going on, but there's nothing here. I'm starting to come up with a theory, but I need some more data. I recommend we take some additional scans. Exactly, but we need to be quick. Those patrols we encountered in orbit will be missed soon. I'm going to order the Chimera to try to avoid contact, but warn us if more ships arrive. So yes, the, the Iconians are, are temporal energy. weak to time travel or can't use it. It's almost like it's in a state of temporal flux. Because their minds don't work in a correct way. Some There's something going on. That would allow them to use there time travel. Over there. But time travel's so dangerous, is it a weapon a that we want to use? That's not natural. Uh, it comes down to that old saying, he who plays with the devil's toys. So, we'll see what happens. 
And we need to find an anomaly which I believe is behind us. There it is. Let's see what's going on another here. Anomaly ahead. Another anomaly? It's the only one. Oh good, the Romulan radiation game. Again, just like the Omega game in the previous mission, our goal here is just to hit a score of 100. So, to be honest, I think I'll, some of these missions definitely have a lot of just busy work around. It's not skill testing or anything, it's just busy work and walking from place to place. Oh, fabulous. There, behind those rocks. Let's get moving. Problem is, you say they have, you know, this is a defensible Hurry. position. They'll be here any moment. Yeah, it's a defensible position, but they have gateways. They can just warp in behind helpful. us. Get ready. I have an idea. We need to use the device. I've been trying to activate it, and I've almost got it. Keep them busy. If I can get it working, I should be able to conceal us. That would be interesting. Well, Herald's incoming, so let's do our thing. With a full away team of four, this shouldn't be too much of a problem. Because this away team's pretty much uh, pretty much sorted for everything at this point. You get a little bit too close to Rom. Sorry, Nog. I keep calling him Rom, I don't know why. It's hard to believe that DS9, I think the final episode of DS9 was something like 15 years ago now. It's hard, it's really hard to believe that. But, because you know, when the next generation came out, it had only been 20 years since the original series had been on. So, we're almost looking that far, we're almost looking that far away to the end of Deep Space Nine. Voyager was about three or four years beyond that. But we do have a new series on the way, starting in 2017, so we will have to see where it goes. I'm hoping it's set in the future in the Prime Universe. I think that that was maybe one of the issues with Enterprise, that there really wasn't... Although the stakes felt good. We knew the Federation was going to, we knew nothing was going to happen to the Federation and it's one of those things when you know what's going to happen in the storyline, there's very little there's very little in the way of drama or suspense that can happen because you know that certain things can happen for sure but you know that overall the Federation will survive. There's no downside to it. Whereas when you set it in the future or like in Star Trek Online, you can get to the point where it goes, yeah, actually, the Federation's in real trouble, and if they want to end the franchise, they literally can just destroy the Federation if they want to. One more connection and that should... Oh, sure, save yourself, Nog. Oh, great. Well, we don't know if he saved himself. He could have erased himself from the timeline. We just do not know at this point. We'll just beat this last few lines of heralds. And let's get motoring. Oh. Looks like a few of my guys got exploded on. Thanks for that. Oh, 
I think we got this though. I suppose I could kick it while I'm in range there. Oh no, we're good. Let's get to where we need to get. Cheekily run over this hill. Really do wonder what these mineral deposits are. Strange. Apparently this is a defensive position. That's a lot of heralds. <laughs> I love that feedback cascade. What the? If you'll forgive the pun, I managed to buy us some time. Puns never explain, never apologize. So explain yourself, Nog. It's taken me some time to convince the Prenum to help us, but they finally agreed. Remember how I said the device could remove someone from the time stream? It did. That's where we are now, in the temporal bubbles. And how we perceive time in here is a little different than outside. That's why the Herald can't see us. We're out of their timelines. Out of all timelines, in fact. While we're here, it's almost like we don't exist. No one's shooting at us. I think that's a good thing. The Krenomar, they're a little touchy. Uh, almost being driven to extinction by the Vaudoir has made them suspicious. But they're willing to talk to us if we help them stabilize the temporal energy. I suggest we help. I wouldn't want to be in here if the fields collapse. Yeah, I mean, you'd think that being driven to extinction might make someone suspicious. I've had some time to observe you and Captain Nog, and your actions make it clear that you are no friend of the Vatwar or the Heralds. This does not, however, assure me that you will be allies to my people. The Krenum have lost much. Our empire is gone, and our people have been killed or scattered. We are what remains, and I will do whatever I must to protect this system, even if it means leaving you to face the Heralds alone. You have already repaired some of our emitters that were damaged by the attack, but there is more yet to do. Should our temporal equipment fail, this location will be instantly overrun by Heralds. If that happens, none of us will survive. Oh, great. Our time stream is approximately half a second off real time. We found that's all that's needed to conceal our presence from our enemies. We can observe what happens in real time, as well as the possibilities that come from alteration of the timeline. Perhaps if we'd made different decisions, we would be able to confront the Vodwar as directly as you do. Alas, they overwhelmed our defenses too quickly, and we lost our fleets and most of our worlds. Now I fear that altering this present would come at too great a price. I don't like the sound the of this. The scientists who developed this technology did so to try and correct a terrible tragedy that befell our people. But no matter what he did or how many alterations he made to the timeline, was never able to completely restore all that was lost. It was as if time itself fought against him. Ultimately, his quest was a failure. But remnants of his work remain, and we have used those to protect what is left of the Imperium. Wait a minute, how do you know this? I thought the timelines were reset as if that thing never existed. I've had some time to observe you and Captain Nog. And your actions make it clear that you are no friend of the Vaudoir or the Heralds. Okay, we've this heard this not, before. You have already repaired some of our emitters. More of our emitters must be realigned. And there are other pieces of equipment my people are already working to repair. Assist my team, and then we will talk again. Okay, this is... I mean, it's an MMO, right? So there's... NPC number one who can't get off his backside and sends you off to help NPC number two and number three. 
you know, kill arbitrary large numbers of X to get their left bollocks or something, but it's an MMO, there's gonna be busy work in it. Your fight overloaded some of the power couplings we used to moderate the temporal flow. If we had a contained space like the technology was originally designed for, this wouldn't be a problem. But we keep pushing the boundaries of what these flow modulators will do. I'm rerouting the power to take stress off the damaged couplings. But first, we need to get this capacitor aligned and ready for the transfer. The temporal technology was developed by a scientist named Anorax. He's still a mystery, even to us. We know he was a ship commander in the Imperium fleet and a genius in temporal mechanics, and that he started work on his inventions in the late 22nd century after our war with the Rilnar. Perhaps he saw temporal manipulation as a way to change our fortunes. We know he was working towards weaponizing his designs, and I can tell from what little I've seen that it is possible. But full access to his data is restricted, so I don't know the full capabilities of his work. Oh dear. Your fight overload. So hang on, 22nd century, so did he throw himself 200 years into the okay, future with all that manipulation? Because at the end of Year of Hell, uh, you saw Anorax work, still working on the design. But I suppose if he was removed from the timeline and put 200 years future, all we've done, all we did was really move the events forward. But obviously, because he has, or maybe the Kranim are just super long lived. I don't know. But because he has, um... Hold this. No, hold it right next to the bracket. Or the spanner won't... There. Got it. Thanks. Something is putting too much stress on these components. I'm not sure what it is, but we don't have enough spare parts to keep rebuilding this transceiver. Grab a tricorder and run a level 3 diagnostic. Maybe there are some microfractures. If we can find and repair those, this should hold out until I can fabricate a new unit. Anorax's original designs are for a temporal field that's big enough for a ship, sizable but finite. We've adapted the tech to cover much larger areas, but that makes the field more unstable, and we had to get everything operational before the Vodwar found us. So we cut some corners, a lot of corners. We're making updates and repairs as fast as we can, but we can't afford a failure. This tech is the only thing keeping us alive. Hold Wonderful. This. Yes, no. uh, Anorax's ship was protected from space-time, so none of the people on it aged. There we go. That should do it. I just guessed at those. You can you can simply ask Nog what he thinks needs doing. Again, busy work more than anything else, but you get the idea. And it does allow us to expand a little bit on what uh, Anorax's designs are, but the fact is he still exists in this timeline. Well, we don't know if he's alive, but the idea of the Krenim time weapon ship is alive and well. It's just the Krenim in this timeline, or the timeline caused by Voyager, never got the chance to, uh, never got the chance to deploy it. It seems, or maybe they did. I, I'm really confused. This is why I don't like time travel stories too much because they leave plot holes. Are out of alignment. They help keep us at a stable point in the timeline. If they fail completely, we could end up lost in time. Grab a hyperspanner. We need to get this fixed before the drift coefficient moves out of the safe zone. The Imperium was at its peak in the mid 22nd century. At that time, it controlled more than 900 planets, and our territory spread across more than 5,000 parsecs. Then came the Rilnar, and the Zal, and the Garanor, the Mawasi, and the Nahydron. Our wars chipped away at us, carving one planet after another away from the Imperium. There were only 27 planets left when the Vodwar came. Now, 
almost everyone on those worlds is gone too. The temple I think that corresponds to one of the temple incursions in Year of Hell, uh, where they got a 97% restoration or something, and the Coronum Imperium was massively powerful. You should realign the Matrix Crystals. Thanks, Nog. Disconnect. You need to disconnect. Yeah. Good. Oh. I'll put the next location on your tripod. It's okay. We've repaired everything now, so let's go back and speak to the Krenim leader. So, the Krenim are definitely using Anorax's technology, but it appears like they don't have the weapon ship. Tell you what, that'd do some damage to the Iconians, but it's whether it would... Yeah, that's the Herald Beam that comes from the Lobby store. It's pretty powerful. You've shown you're willing to help. Now perhaps we can come to a mutually beneficial arrangement. We have Anorax's plans, but not the... Interesting. The Heralds are opening a gateway. Oh, this better be good. The repairs should be enough. At least Kalis did injure Taket, it looks like. They couldn't see us? There were Iconians right in front of us and nothing! They had no idea we were here. We were completely safe. Looks like the Iconians have left. The only protection left to my people is our ability to manipulate time. But it is something we must do with great care. Even the most innocuous of changes can ripple through reality in unexpected ways. Oh yeah. My people and I have made Anorax's theories of temporal manipulation our lives work. In at least one temporal variant, his ship made the Krenim Imperium the undisputed masters of this region of space. If only we could recreate that vessel. How do they know about these temporal variants? I don't Anorax get it. designed a ship, a wondrous vessel, 
that could manipulate the time streams and erase elements in an attempt to bring about a desired result. Our records show that he even attempted to use this vessel to restore the Krenim's fortunes, but he was defeated by an unknown alliance. That may have happened. Afterward, the Krenim Imperium declined, as perhaps was its fate all along. We were diminished, but content to let time progress as it would. Until the Vardwar. I really don't understand how this all ties in with the timeline, but that's why I hate temporal mechanics. The first Krenim worlds to fall managed to warn the others. When the Vardwar came, we hid ourselves in the time stream. It was the only way we survived. Before the Vodwar arrived, we were working on a relic. It was a replica of Anorax's time ship. With it, we could have gone back and eliminated the Vodwar threat before it even began. Oh, God. The Vodwar's assault on the Imperium took too much from us. Now we possess Anorax's work, but not the means to bring it to life. You have seen what our technology can do. We have the designs. You have the manpower and the materials. Perhaps your governments would be interested in mutual cooperation. Allow us a chance to undo what the Vodwar did, and we will give you something that will erase your enemies from time itself. Oh my god, that's too much power for anyone to wield. There's more here than what you've seen. Huh? You Jeepers! The yes, we removed ourselves from the time stream to stay alive. With your help, we can change everything. You hit an entire planet, but you can't build this time ship on your own? We have the plans. Our resources are almost gone. We have shipyards, workers, and all the materials you could need. Precisely. We revealed ourselves to you as a gesture of good faith. What will you do in return? The Iconians and the Heralds are gone. It's safe to resync with our time and contact our ship. But this is huge. A whole Krenum colony that survived the Vodwar? One that has temporal technology that even the Iconians can't counter? A weaponized time ship that can erase entire civilizations like they never existed? This could change the entire war. We we could have a chance now. We could have a chance, but we could also have a, something that's worse than the Iconians on our hands, if that's the case. might be the Iconian's weakness, but it's a technology that should not exist. But I guess we'll see what the Alliance has to say. Temporal mechanics is not a complication we need, but this weapon they are proposing sounds intriguing. You and Captain Nog were correct in thinking the Alliance would be interested in investigating such a thing. Personally, I approve of anything the Iconians might fear. Kapla! I'm not sure I do approve, but we'll see what the Alliance thinks of it next time in Broken Circle. See you then, guys.